Section 1 of Favourite Fairy Tales Retold This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by James Pinniger Favourite Fairy Tales Retold by Julia Darrow Cowles Preface in bringing together these old classics for children, the author of the book has sought to apply the rule laid down in her preceding book, The Art of Storytelling, and to paint each story against some universal background of truth. The occasional exceptions are the stories of pure fancy or delicious nonsense. None of the stories depict physical cruelty or violence, from which children instinctively shrink. Neither is craftiness or fraud or lying rewarded. Yet the stories are full of romance and adventure, and of the old-time fairy lore which children love. Changes in the original stories have been freely made when necessary to bring them into conformity with the above conditions, for these old folk and fairy tales belong to all peoples and all times, and, as in the olden days, so now, the stamp of the individual storyteller may be renewedly impressed upon them. It is hoped that the stories may prove a source of true joy to the children who read as well as to storytellers and listeners. J. D. C. End of section 1. Recording by James Pinniger. Section 2 of Favourite Fairy Tales Retold. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by James Pinniger Favourite Fairy Tales Retold by Julia Darrow Cowles Section 2 The Three Lemons from Labelay Once upon a time there was a prince named Carlino who lived with his father, the king, in the Palace of Rubies. The king was growing old, and he wished... Oh, how he wished that his son would marry, and he told his wish to all his people. He must have a wife who is young, and rich, and beautiful, the king said, but more than all this, she must be loving and good. So they searched all the country over for a wife for Carlino, but the prince only ran away to the woods, and declared that he would not marry at all. The king was sad and sorry indeed, but one day a strange thing happened. As the king and the prince sat together at dinner, the prince cut his finger with a knife. Three drops of blood fell into a dish of cream at the prince's plate. The prince stared into the dish, then suddenly exclaimed, My father, I see a vision of a beautiful maiden whose skin is as fair and smooth as cream, and whose cheeks and lips are red as these drops of blood. I am going to seek her. When I have found her, I shall marry her and bring her to the palace of rubies. With that, he mounted the most magnificent horse in all the king's stables and galloped away. A long, long time he journeyed. He visited towns and villages, he entered castles and cottages, but nowhere did he see the maiden of his vision. At last, after days and weeks and months of journeying, he came to a place called World's End. There was nothing but a line of shore, and beyond it stretched sea and sky and mist. Carlino looked about. An old man sat on the shore alone. What sea is this, good father? asked Carlino. It is the sea without a shore, replied the old man. Away beyond the horizon, lost in the mist, is an island. Three sisters dwell on the island, but none who go there ever come back. But a prince may succeed where others have failed, said Carlino, and he stepped into a boat which lay on the shore. No sooner was the prince seated than the boat shot through the water like an arrow from a bow. In a short time, Carlino came within sight of the mysterious island. Its coast was rough, and its cliffs were rugged, but the moment the boat touched the shore, Carlino began to climb. When he reached the top, he found three huts. He knocked at the door of the first. I can do nothing for you, cried a snarling voice, but go to my sister who lives beyond. Carlino knocked at the door of the second hut. I can do nothing for you, cried a plaintive voice, but go to my sister who lives beyond. 
Carlino hurried on and knocked at the door of the third hut. Perhaps I can help you, cried a pleasant voice, and a young woman opened the door of the hut. Carlino told her his story, and when he had finished she gave him three lemons and a beautiful knife with a handle of mother of pearl. Take these, she said, and hasten back to your father, the king. When you reach the borders of your own country, stop at the first spring of water, and there you must cut in two these lemons. As you cut each, there will spring forth a beautiful fairy with skin like cream and lips like drops of blood. She will ask you for a drink of water. Give it to her quickly, or she will vanish from your sight. But if the first and the second leave you, be sure to capture the third. If you do not, I can do nothing more to help you. But if you give her the water quickly, she will stay with you and love you, and you shall make her your wife. Prince Carlino thanked the young woman, folded the precious lemon safely in his mantle, and hastened to his boat. He met with many adventures on the way, but at last he reached the borders of his father's kingdom, and came to the spring of water. His heart beat fast as he took his knife and cut the first lemon. Out sprang a wonderful fairy, who asked Carlino for a drink of water. But he, poor fellow, was so amazed at the wonderful sight that he stood a moment as though rooted to the ground, and immediately the fairy disappeared. Ah, why did I lose so beautiful a creature, cried Carlino. Then he cut the second lemon. Out sprang a fairy as beautiful as the first, and asked for a drink of water. But again Carlino was so amazed that he moved but slowly, and the fairy disappeared. Woe is me, cried Carlino, if I capture not the third. Then he cut the remaining lemon, and there sprang forth the most beautiful fairy of them all, and before she had finished asking for water, Carlino was upon his knees, offering her a brimming cup. The fairy, whose skin was like cream, and whose lips were like drops of blood, smiled and thanked the prince, and after drinking the water, gave him her hand. Carlino was half afraid that it was a dream from which he would awaken, but the fairy promised to marry him and to go with him to the Palace of Rubies. But you must go as a true princess, said Carlino. Wait here while I hasten to my father. I will return for you with attendants, with horses, and with royal splendour. Then shall you appear before the king in a manner befitting a princess. So Carlino hastened away, and the fairy, feeling frightened at being left alone in the woods, sprang into a tree and hid among the leaves. A few moments later, a black slave came to the spring to draw water. She was ugly of face and of temper, for she had never known anything in all her life but hard labour and abuse. As she stooped to fill her jar, she saw in the clear water the reflection of the fairy's beautiful face. She looked up. Why are you there? she cried. The fairy who had only known love and happiness all her life, and who trusted everyone, replied, I am waiting for the prince to come and make me his bride. Then a wicked idea came to the mind of the old slave. She would shake the fairy into the stream and take her place in the tree. Then, when the prince came, she would say that she was the fairy, and that a witch had changed her to her present ugly form. She raised her arm to shake the tree. But the fairy understood what she meant to do, and quickly flew away in the form of a dove. When the prince returned, he was quite beside himself with grief and amazement. But the old slave declared that she was the fairy in disguise, and at last he took her to the palace of rubies. I will have no black slaves inherit my throne, stormed the king. But his prime minister told him that the ugly negress was a fairy in disguise that such changes had often occurred, and that no doubt the bride would become as beautiful as before when the marriage ceremony was performed. So at last the king consented, and preparations for the wedding were begun, but the king and Prince Carlino were in great distress. One day, just before the wedding, Prince Carlino noticed, growing close to the palace wall, a little lemon tree which had not been there before. He asked about it, and the chef of the palace told him, a dove lighted near the kitchen window, and as I needed one more for our feast, I killed it. Three drops of blood fell upon the ground, and almost at once this lemon tree sprang up. Prince Carlino looked closely at the little tree, and behold, there were three lemons on its branches. 
He seized them and ran to his room, opened the knife, which he always carried, and filled a jeweled cup with water. Then, trembling, he cut the lemons as before, and, as before, a fairy sprang from each. The first and second disappeared, but to the third he offered the cup of water. For the third fairy was his true bride, come back to him again. Everyone in the palace declared that the wicked negress should be put to death. But before this was done, the fairy said to the king, I am sure you will grant me a wedding gift. The king was so happy that he answered, I will give you anything that you ask. Then, said the fairy, give me the life of this woman now condemned to death. Uh, truly, it is a poor gift, said the king, but I have given my word. But why do you wish it? he added. Ah, said the fairy bride, she has never known anything but hard labour and abuse. I will give her a happier life, and she will find goodness through loving. My dear, said the king, now I know of a truth that the bride of Prince Carlino is as good as she is beautiful. So the prince and the fairy were married, and they lived happily ever after. End of section 2. Recording by James Pinnegar.